So welcome, let's take a look at the new features of this brand new update of Harmony S that arrived from my Mate 50 Pro. We have new service widgets, widgets that can now automatically expand or shrink as widgets are added or removed while stacks intentionally reshuffle to show the widgets you need on top, which is quite a nice of an addition. We have multi-window support, better safe split screen options. So we know this already. I think I had one open already somewhere here, but let's let's go just to the browser, for example, and let's check out here one website, for example, and uh, we open up another application, just like, for example, the files application. We can do a split screen, and we have a new option here. You can see the three dots there, and if I click on them, they allow me, allow me to save this combo. I can also flip top to bottom with this option, but I can save this combo. And this one will be saved to the home screen, as you can see here. So now I will find here the browser and files icon, and I can immediately open this up. And now I have this split combo here, which is quite nice of an addition if you want to multitask or do this a lot, especially like this. Otherwise, the stacked widgets you see here, uh, we have uh, this here uh, already. This is now automatically resizing and so on. And uh, then we have also the possibility to see enhance multi-window floating windows now automatically shrink and stay open when you return to the home screen, which is quite interesting. So if I have a floating window open, just like, for example, my notepad here, I have my shopping list there. If I return to the home screen, you can see they stay open. They're going to the top right corner. I can bring them uh, to the front again by just tapping on them, which is quite nice of an addition as well. And yeah, they just move out, out of the way, which is quite nice. Then charging, we have an improvement there as well regarding a turbo charge mode. So when you plug in your device, it will automatically allow you to turbo charge. It will give you a notification now that tells you about the possibility to press and hold for turbo charging, which is quite nice, which allows you to juice up your phone a little bit faster. App Guard improvements for enhanced security when an app tries to redirect you to another application. A pop-up will appear to ask you for permission. And then, which is quite cool, I already saw that it allows to um, do an option in the system, allows it to preview certain documents, just like in your email application, if you got a PDF or something, it's opening up it in a new um, internal window instead of like opening up an external application, which is quite nice. Otherwise, we have also the possibility to uh, allow to be switched between speakers, earpiece, Bluetooth devices, and so on. In your settings here, you can see the multi-device switcher here. This allows you to do this now as well, which was, I think, previously not there, but I'm not sure. I never used it this way. Um, but anyway, in calls, it will now also be able to uh, do this, which is quite nice. And then, of course, uh, the Huawei print screen has been optimized, make it easier, looks a bit different. And we have integrated May uh, 2023 security patches. This is what's already in the change log, but there I think are some improvements with the camera as well. So we'll check this out. And definitely what I can tell you already is either they adding some improvements or they did already to improve the speed of the device because it's much, much faster already. The animation's much more fluid than they were before, which is quite a nice uh, addition here to this new Harmony S uh, version 3.0. Uh, I can tell you exactly which version this is by going to the software update tool here 300305 i think this might be one of the last versions before we will see harmony as 3.1 arriving also on the mate 50 pro so let's take a look at the camera performance now so this is now a video recording with the mate 50 pro and by the way i'm using the internal microphones here on this device so what do you think about this one here uh, this is the main camera sensor, of course, you get nice background blur. F2, I think it should have right now. Uh, sun is shining directly on my face, and of course, in 4K, 30 frames per second, we get nice stabilization, we get nice colors and HDR, and of course, I can also zoom out to the ultra-wide angle. We still have the zooming slider for the ultra-wide angle, so nothing has changed here in terms of camera software at all. But maybe the algorithms have been optimized a little bit for video and photo. But uh, yeah, it's a rumor, but we will see if this is still working fine. Otherwise, Mate 50 Pro, still a great device. What do you think about the video quality here? 
And of course, the Mate 50 Pro has also a great front-facing video camera here, especially useful for vlogging as we have those three options where we can go to the white option here. We can also go to 0.8 times, which is using by default, and we can go to one times, which is also pretty cool. We don't have autofocus here, but we have 4K, uh, 30 frames per second recording, uh, which is quite nice. Stabilization is nice and HDR as well, as you can see here. So a really, really good vlogging cam. What do you Think about this one here. So let's take a look at the photos. Uh, there are not so many surprises, a little bit of improvements here and there, but as the changelog did not state anything, I don't see much of a changes. This one here with the main camera, as you can see, good HDR and to the sides, yeah, it's getting a little bit soft here and there. Depends on the aperture, of course. And uh, yeah, one of the highlights is still the macro capabilities, which are quite fine. And I think they're refined a little bit here in terms of the sharpening algorithm, because I cannot um, yeah, remember it being so sharp, especially on the little details here and not looking too artificial. And the ultra wide angle, I think, stayed pretty much the same, a bit soft towards the sides, uh, decent amount of sharpening applied here, also good amount of HDR, nothing too surprised or to surprise uh, to surprise me here the three and a half times um, no issues at all the same goes with the ten times I think it's the same kind of algorithm maybe they tuned it a little bit down in terms of like how aggressive the um, processing is here to get everything running again so it's a bit less uh, over processed look that we have here Selfies look fine, good HDR with the selfie cam. There's a bit of like sun flare effect here for sure. And here you can see it even more with the background blur turned on. The background blur is very strong here. The cutout is still the same, no improvements here. And uh, in general, I like the F1.4 aperture mode. And I noticed that uh, focusing with this one is much better. So you can see how much sharp uh, this is here very cool bokeh effect this is natural bokeh it's not artificial bokeh added the same goes here where you can see already the leaf or the little thing here behind is not sharp and this is only sharpie because we have f1.4 here very large aperture and yeah get this kind of shots here even with this large aperture you can still get a bit of hdr as you can see as a bit overblown with the sun but it's very nice indeed, and the detail levels that you can achieve, and the bokeh balls, ah, bokehlicious. And here another uh, macro shot. This time, I think, more on par with what I saw before, earlier, with uh, previous firmwares. Nighttime, I think they improved a little bit. As you can see here, the processing or the processed look is not so strong anymore as it was before. It's not 100% sharp therefore but i think i like this a lot especially in the ultra dark mode we have a huge huge difference here this is uh, the one uh, taken um, with the newest firmware i probably skipped over the newest update and here we have to for comparison same kind of uh, thing when I was doing my comparison with the Galaxy S23 Ultra same conditions and you can see yes it is sharp nice but it's way darker way uh, much tuned down and if I zoom in a little bit more you can see there are some details there we can see also some color noise here already creeping in and we don't have that at all with this shot it is maybe a tad softer here and there uh, but it's a fantastic shot. We don't have this color noise here and it's a bit soft there on the outside But we have a nice pattern here as well. So very great um, Yeah Improvement here in the super low light shot, which really is you can just forget about nighttime It is making daylight out of it. It looks like a daylight. It could be a daylight shot, which is like super super awesome and yeah i couldn't see the tools at all the all toolbox at all which is uh, fantastic so overall i see minor improvements here and there and especially the ultra low light shot i think i think i see most of the improvements here what do you think about the cameras on the mate 50 pro